the Secret Service, entrusted with two of America's most vital policing jobs, the safeguarding of our president and the protection of our currency against counterfeiters, the men of the Secret Service are frontline soldiers in the never-ending war against crime, standing not only between the chief executive and an assassin's bullet, but between the nation's currency and the vicious criminals who would despoil it, the men of the Secret Service deserve our gratitude as well as our respect. Yet, too often, their reward is death. Fast as a rabbit. We'll get him. I can't hit him from here. Drive up a little closer and I'll stop him with a bullet. Don't shoot your luck. You might kill Severn. You can't do any engraving if he's dead. Turn him off the road. Frisk him. He may have enough. Hey, that sounds like gunshots in the road ahead. Yeah, step on it. Get him in the car. Help! 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 Please! Help! Well, those idiots will bump him off and ruin everything. I better go and handle it. Nothing doing. You stay with me. They've had their orders. Step on it. Please ruin our tail. in the car. Let him jump. He's a half a mile away by now. Give me a hand. All right. All right. All right. Push up. Got to get this man to a doctor. He'll die before we get any information out of him. Okay. We'll take him to the infirmary at the state prison. That's the nearest. Grab hold of his legs. Come on. Get up. Get up. That's it. Come on. All right. Continue the pressure and keep me posted. Crimp Evans won't talk. I can't get a full report on what happened till Holt gets here. I hope he got a line on the leader of the mob. Not likely from what he said over the phone. But we have a plan for picking up the trail again. Oh, uh, tell Miss Drew to come in, will you? All right, Miss Drew. Mr. Malloy will see you now. Thank you. I understand you're from the Chicago office. Yes, I flew out. I landed an hour ago. Oh, uh, meet Jim Layden, one of my operators. How do you do? I'm glad to know you, Miss Drew. All the boys will be glad. Your work in the East has been a standout. <laughs> oh, I've just been lucky. Uh, you understand this will be a particularly dangerous assignment. A slight mistake may cost you your life. I'm used to that. I've worked where gun mouths' lives aren't worth a dime a dozen. Shoot the works. I'm ready. Thank you. Well, here's the setup. We're up against a criminal wave. Post office stick-ups, bank robberies, and so forth. Last night, John Seven, one of the best engravers in the Treasury Department, was carried off. I see. Going to force him to engrave plates for counterfeit money. That's pretty smart. Simple, too, but not new. If Seven engraves the plates, the phony money will be practically undetectable. As serious as that, huh? Yes. 
The reason the department sent for you is this. The plan we've worked out calls for a woman operative. Now, you never worked in the West. I'll do my best. All right, Severn, down you go. Where are you taking me? What is this place? You'll find out. Get on down. I wouldn't like to finish it here. I'd mess up the scenery. Spike, how long are we supposed to stay here? Until the boss gives us the word. Valen's in there talking to him now. Get this. Crimp Evans and Nick Farrell were run down by the police. Crimp was wounded and captured. Farrell escaped. Has he reported yet? Not yet. He may be wounded and hiding out somewhere. Report to me when the men bring in Severn. All right, boss. We'll keep a close lookout and let you know the minute anything happens. That is all. Here comes the boys and the guy they went after. Well, Tony, if everything goes well, we may have a new workman. A fellow by the name of Nick Farrell. Who is this Nick Farrell the boy speaks of? Anybody know him? No, none of us know him except by reputation. He's been hiding out with uh, Crip Evans after making a break from Leavenworth. How does that, is he? I'm hoping he don't come here. Why put the heat on us? Well, the boss is still the boss. You got him, huh? Where's the other boys? They led the cops off. Is Valden inside? Waiting and anxious. Come on. He don't look like he's so clever. <laughs> Here's your man, Valden. We had a little trouble. All right, all right. I've had a portal and all that. Well, Seven? We know you're one of the best engravers in the government service. You're going to help us make some money that can't be told from the kind Uncle Sam makes. If you obey orders, you won't get hurt. You can't make me turn traitor to my country. You can kill me if you like. Oh, brave guy, eh? Think you can take it. Well, it's not as simple as all that. We have means here of making you do just as you're told. Show him where his workroom is. I won't go, do you hear me? I won't go. Let me out of here. I won't go. Oh. Take him out and tame him. Use a little persuasion. I'll uh, tell the boss he's here. We publicized a yarn that Nick Farrell, a big time crook doing a stretch in Leavenworth, had escaped and was headed west. I see, and your man Holt got in contact with this mob by passing himself off as Farrell. That's right. He hid out with Crimp Evans, got acquainted with a couple of the others of that gang, and was taken in on the grabbing of Severn. We expected they'd take hold of the hideout of the leader of the gang, but... Uh... I know. He bungled the job. Wrong, lady. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I spoke out of turn. I'd have been in their hideout right now if the county police hadn't messed things up. We're going to fix that. And Miss Drew, meet Jack Holt, your future husband. Husband? I don't get it. Maybe I can explain. Nick Farrell, that's me, broke a couple of ribs when he jumped from a car last night. The police are going to pick him up and take him to the prison infirmary where they're holding Crip Evans. And my ever-loving wife, that's you, going to help spring us. Well, that's a quick romance. How do we work it? Well, the details aren't worked out as yet, but roughly this is the plan. Now keep both ears open because we can't afford a slip-up. trying to do? Kill me? Pipe down. We don't baby anyone around here. Get into bed and shut up. Okay, okay.
Come on, let's get out of here. You turned out to be. What happened to you? I busted a couple of ribs when I jumped out of the car. The bull picked me up in the drugstore this morning when I was phoning the wife. A wife, huh? That's fine. And you slated to go back to Wattenworth. Not me. The missus is pulling wires right now to spring me. That's something. How about taking me with you? Not a chance. Be too risky. Look, Nick. Quiet. You'll ruin everything. In case you don't know it. You only speak here when you're spoken to. Okay, brother, I know the rules. Yeah, you know the rules. Hey, Tony, have the boys got the stuff ready yet? Yeah, finished the first batch about an hour ago. Uh, it wasn't as hard to make Seven do his stuff as I thought. Can you blame him? No man could take the working over we gave him. Well, the boss isn't through with him yet. He's got to make some fives and tens, too. I think I'll give him a little sales talk so he doesn't get cold on the idea. and it's all ready, and it's nifty. Well, that's fine. Pack it in here, boys, and make it snappy. Yep. Now, seven. Well, Seven, you've done a fine job. It'll take sharp eyes to detect your stuff from the real McCoy. You promised I'd be out of here in a couple of days. It's been two weeks or more. I've lost track of time. When are you going to let me go? Just as soon as you turn out the fives and tens. I've engraved my last plate. Look, Severn, you can't win. Why argue? Remember what happened to you the last time. I'll get back to your press. If his nibs causes you any trouble, refuses to cooperate, work him over again. We will. Hurry back with some good dough. Suitcase. Why, to carry off my winnings, of course. What else? Well, fine, and I hope you fill it. But you'll have to check it with me for now. Oh, okay. Have it ready for me when I leave. And uh, Davis. So Seventeen in the black. Seventeen. Uh, Whoever thought of calling me lucky, Arnold? The liar. Too bad, Mr. Arnold. He can't win all the time. Why not? Well, I guess this isn't my night. Ready to go again. Get your best down. All down. Go in your pocket. Let's go. Chief, you saw Valden? Of course. How's the stuff look? <laughs> Pretty near perfect, I'd say. Hmm. That could pass anybody but an expert and pull some of them. I'll gamble on it. Yeah, but that's a lot of queer money to have to pass out. I have lots of other outlets beside this ship. The racetracks will take care of any surplus. Any more information about this man, Farrell? Well, nothing except that the federal men are waiting for his broken ribs to mend before taking it back. Seems they were pretty close behind him when he landed in town. Hmm, that's too bad. From all accounts, he's a brainy man. We could use him. Tell Valden to get back to the hideout at once. Wait there for orders. I'm anxious for some of those smaller bills. They're easier to pass. Right away, sir. I get away. My own dog gets better than that. I'm an intern, not a cook. Look, Nick, you gotta take me out of here with you. You ain't got no place to go when the Federals have you back again in no time. Maybe. But having you with me won't help things any. Sure it will. My mob's got a hideout that's ever been spotted. Yeah? Where is it? I ain't telling you where it is. But you help me and I'll fix it so he won't be caught. I'll think it over and see what I can do. That's a pal. I'll see that you're not sorry. When do you expect the wife? 
Any time now. You better come pretty soon. I can't stall him forever. Come on, come on. What's the stall? I want to see Nick Farrell. We don't allow visitors in the infirmary. It ain't regular. The pass is regular, ain't it? Signed by the warden himself. Come on, do your stuff. All right. I'll take you up. Ed, watch out here. Thanks a lot. Denny! Nick Farrell's mall. Take her in. Mall nothing. Nick Farrell's wife. And don't you forget it. You want to see the certificate? No, I'll take your word for it. My error, Mrs. Farrell. <laughs> you mug. Lay down. Looked like you didn't expect anything. He called you Denny, right? Right. I got a tough grind. I'm on duty till way after 10 o'clock tonight. You want me to weep in the bucket? Take me in. Quiet, you mugs. There's a lady here. A visitor, pal. Hi, you big boy. Hello, honey. Don't go too close. You're not going to pass him anything. How could I pass him anything? They frisked me in the warden's office. Listen, Nick, I'm doing everything I can to keep him from sending you back to federal prison. I've been in touch with a lot of big shot politicians. Don't bother with the politicians. I told you to get in touch with the governor. He's been away. I'm going to talk to him by long distance. When? Ten o'clock tonight. Ten sharp. Well, I'll give him a strong line. He's sure to help us. He'd better. Or oh, there'll be a couple of us go back to Leavenworth. Couple, huh? Don't worry, Nick. I'll do the best I can. Anyway, they won't take you away from here till you're feeling better. <laughs> As though they'd consider my feelings. Sorry, lady. Time's up. Oh, but I've hardly spoken to him. That's your hard luck. Come on. Time's up. Okay. Thanks for the lady stuff anyway. You're a gent. Goodbye, Nick. I'll let you know how things go. Just keep in mind I'm working for you every minute. Okay, kid. You're swell. Well, it's all set. What do you mean, all set? A gangster's mall gonna talk to the governor? Quiet. I tell you, it's all set. You heard what she said. Ten o'clock tonight. Is that what she meant? But you were going to tell her about me. I told her about you, dope. I said there'd be a couple of passengers, didn't I? Yeah. You're smart, Nick. The chief can use you. Brains are needed in our outfit. And boy, you got plenty. Thanks for the compliment. Now relax until the time comes. What's the matter with you? That thing's a bust. I knew she couldn't make it. Pipe down. We've still got four minutes to go. Things go right. What's it now? The wagon's downstairs to transfer a feral. Did you get the doctor's okay? No. Do I need it? Yes. Go and get it. Ready, Crimp? This is it. I've been ready for hours. Oh. Oh! What's the matter with you? Lost my ribs. Get back in the bed. They're busted again. I can't. I'll help you. San Marcos Pike. Use caution. These men are desperate.
Okay, Mrs. Farrell. Your hubby and his pal are inside, safe as bugs in a rug. That's why you know where to collect for the job. Sure do. Want any more help? No, thanks. Start rolling the minute they're out and disappear. Okay, big boy, out you come, pronto. Hello, honey. You did a swell job. All right, take it away. Come on, Crimp. What's holding you back? See, you must have cut it pretty fine. I heard police sirens just before you drew up. I guess I didn't sock that guard hard enough. He came too soon and I expected. The alarm was on right after we cleared the gates. Break it up, you two. We gotta get moving. Crimp, this is the message. We met. You're a cool one. You can't even say thanks for springing you. I appreciate what you've done, but we gotta get moving. Where are we? Heading east, a mile or so from San Marcos Pike. Well, springing you was my job. Now it's up to you guys. Where do we go from here? Crap, you're the doctor from now on. Where's that famous hideout of yours? I'll take you there, but I'm doing the driving. Can you beat that? He don't trust us after all we've done for him. Mrs. Farrell, I don't trust nobody. If I was to bring the wrong guy into that hideout, my life wouldn't be worth a nickel. He's right, honey. Let's go. Fair enough. Let's. me are going on. The missus turns back here. She can have the car. What do you mean she turns back? Why, there's any leak in this job, she'll get a 10-year stretch. You let her come this far. Sure. To avoid a chance of her being picked up before we were in the clear. I take enough chance taking you with me, but not the dame. They knocked me off and her, too. Well, then I'm... He's right. It's better that way. Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. Beat it. Okay. I was afraid of that. Read this note when you get a chance. All right. Bye, Nick. Take care of yourself. I'll get in touch with you as soon as the heat's off. Right. Canoe in fast water? Well, enough. How fast is it? Plenty. There's a waterfall downstream a ways. You got a portage around it. That's how we get to the hideout. Okay. talking about. Don't worry, we're coming to it. Cross and wife of yours thought you'd trick me. Now you're gonna get yours now. Head for the shore, stool pigeon.
the most dangerous man in the gang. What has he seen? Who is he shooting at? And what about Kay? Can she escape his evil clutches? Don't miss Ramparts of Revenge, next week's exciting chapter of Hope of the Secret Service.